We are talking to Professor Kumar at uh, CMI. Um, I understand you have been with CMI since day one. Uh, not exactly. Okay. But actually, as, uh, so I joined in '96, uh -huh. which is about I think seven years almost yeah. after CMI started. Okay. But I guess there are only three people I think who have been here longer. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so you are not here from day zero, but from day one. No. So I think day zero, I think is Madhavan, uh -huh. uh, Seshadri for yeah. sure, yeah. and uh, more or less Balaji, I think. Okay. Yeah. So what did you do? Uh, when did you do your undergraduate? Ah, so 86 to 90, mm -hmm. I was in the Bell Institute of Technology and Science. Okay. Milani, and uh, then. I but did you do engineering then? Yes. So okay. So I did engineering, but uh -huh. for some reason which I still haven't figured out, those days uh -huh. the degrees in computer science and I think instrumentation okay. used to be called MSc Tech. So my four-year degree is actually a master's. I mean, oh, I suppose. Uh, so I don't know how they manage this. After a few years, after I graduated, maybe about 10 years later, uh -huh. uh, it was changed to a B, a B tech account. B tech account. Yeah. So it was called a MSc Tech. It's a four year long undergraduate degree. And then it I was in computer, computer science. In computer science. And then I went to TIFR to do a PhD. Okay. So you went after four years, you went directly to TIFR to yes. do your PhD. Yes. Uh, and uh, I heard some people say that in TIFR you can never get a, get a PhD in computer science because they never let you finish and stuff like that. Well, uh, it's worse in mathematics for sure. Okay. So in computer science, see, I took uh, five and a half years. Of okay. Mm -hmm. But did you do on theory or yes, what? There was only theory in yeah. KF for us. Yeah. I mean, even today, probably there is still only theory. Mm -hmm. Those days, it was uh, purely theory. Yeah. Yes, it was theory. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but not the kind of theory I do now. Okay. So actually, that was one of the reasons I moved here. So uh -huh. I was, uh, my work there was basically on something called cross algebra, which are some uh -huh. style of doing things, yeah. which people no longer do anymore and uh, I was already tired of it by the time I finished my PhD okay. and I I went to TIFR because when I was an undergraduate I liked the automated theory stuff so okay. then I but I went there I couldn't do it because there weren't anybody to talk to okay. but by the time I was towards the end of my PhD I had confidence to know that I can do something on my own so I started looking at this okay. and then I found the Madrasa sort of people okay. Tiagara just so, to be here in CMI okay. so that's how he hadn't started. gone yet to Singapore no so Tiagara just went to Singapore if I remember right uh -huh. Uh, so he moved out of CMI long term, I think around 2000, 2001. Okay. And I think he left CMI and moved to Singapore a little later, maybe 3 4 years later. I would think maybe around 2004, 2005. Mm -hmm. I don't exactly recall, but it's something like this. Mm -hmm. He was certainly in CMI till 2001, for sure. Right. Yeah. Right. So, uh, you know, the, 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 the paper you wrote with Tyagarajan and uh, uh, Madhavan and so on is one of the highly cited papers that yes. That was around 2000. So that is an evidence of the fact that Jagger was still very much here. We wrote the paper in 2000. Yes. <laughs> so, so he was, yeah, I think he must have left around 2003, 2004. This is what I don't know. So did you guys design, redesign the computer science program here? After oh, we redesigned the program when we started off and uh -huh. things haven't changed too much from those times. Okay. See, so, uh, I mean, this is going to be a math program in which uh, there is right. a sort of a one third component which is computer science. Right. Which could turn out to be more if they choose to do the optional courses in computer science. This was the idea, idea originally. So I was not here when the actual things were being done because that year I was in Stony Brook on a visit. But I mean, I knew from long term sure. what was going on. Yeah. So if I'm right, I think, uh, see, finally, it is very difficult to give a completely broad based degree in computer science and a broad based degree in mathematics in three years. Yeah. So we consciously chose that we will emphasize the aspects that we are good at and yeah. which we can possibly teach better than other people can. Right. But also in parallel have some courses so that yeah. they do get a, a basis, Broadly. basic, yeah, whatever you need to know about computer science or the computer scientists. Yeah. That sort of education we will give them. So we have courses on, you know, we used to teach courses on digital circuit design and operating systems and so on, which none of us were actually doing or were interested in. But right. I mean, it is necessary as part of yeah. our day. Yeah. Yeah, so, so uh, I mean, for the bread and butter courses mm -hmm. in how many, if, if I want to do a computer science degree. bachelor's degree, uh, how many hardcore computer science do I have to do, you know, that I don't have to do as mathematics? So, well, see, here, mm -hmm. remember, there is no choice. The sense that the moment you come in as an undergraduate, yes. you are doing uh, math and computer science degree those days. Uh -huh. Now, of course, you could do math, computer science or math physics, but I'm saying if you choose to do the math, computer science stream, mm -hmm. There are about seven courses or something in computer science that is uh, compulsory. Okay. So they will have, I think, uh, so there is an introductory programming course, mm -hmm. which, for example, we 
teach in Haskell, which is a functional programming language. Okay. So, for various reasons, I think, firstly, I think functional programming languages are much easier to understand as a first programming language. Okay. That is one. And it's closer to mathematics in spirit and uh, it makes it easier for students who are trying to learn mathematics to mm -hmm. learn such languages. Mm -hmm. So, that's one other thing which is a more devious reason is also that, you know, uh, some of the students who come in already have some programming background. Right. They typically come with an imperative C, C++ like background. Right. And this is a level that I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so, they are all equal. Yeah. <laughs> that is one. So, that is one course. Mm -hmm. Then I think we have a second programming course which is actually where we teach more languages like C or something. But which is also a starting point for our algorithms uh, okay. part of the education. Okay. And then that's followed up with the second algorithms course which is in the third semester. Then there's a discrete mathematics course. There's a course on the theory of computation where they learn things like computability and what it means to. So it's more mathematics. For example, yeah, we would typically teach some Godel's incompleteness theorem okay. and so on. This is part of our course. And uh, other than that, we have this one course which is operating systems and uh, uh -huh. circuit design and so on. So one on programming languages. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in the master's program, what do they get? Ah, the master's program uh, again it depends. See, initially, we had. Uh, more courses than we currently teach. I mean, they are in the in the books. In the, in the list of optional courses that you could take, we, right. could, we used to teach networks and various things like this. Right. Because when we started off, we didn't know what kind of students would come, right. and if their interests were varied, we cannot say that you know we are so limited that you can only do this. So we many of us taught courses which we had to work to learn. I mean, as well. Right. But sooner or later, we found that students come here because in something they have also looked up to see what we do. Yeah. And they are also coming here only because they are interested in the certain sort of stuff that we teach. So there is some convergence, so the yes. is good for us and good for them. So nowadays the master courses, yes there are some systems courses, but mm -hmm. mostly they are uh, say mathematically oriented, I would say more serious algorithms, more serious compression theory, automata theory, verification. I mean there are some operating things which are related to this, uh, say data mining or something. Right. I mean which is related to some of the theory learned, or verification which is related to automata theory okay. and so on. But it is very much, if I may say so, centered around what uh, we are uh, sort of good at doing. So, so, so for example if I want to do uh, I don't know, say Hadoop or something. I am not sure that. I mean, I am not me. I, I, <laughs> very mm -hmm. difficult, I think. So, computer graphics, for example. Yeah. yeah example, something which you would be able to do if you do a master's elsewhere. Okay. I think it's clearly not possible. We had one uh, faculty member who left in between uh -huh. who actually could teach not exactly computer graphics, right. but the algorithms are not only computer graphics. Okay. Um, he taught a course for a couple of years, I think. Right. Yeah, and then he left, and then after that, right. those courses are now being offered. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so, so, so it's just sure, sure, sure. And uh, where do you see, you know, uh, the computer science program, especially developed in in uh, CMI? So, uh, so going by the trends, so mm -hmm. what students are interested in, what we have been expanding your program. Right. I would think that one direction will definitely go is this uh, big data, data mining related okay. stuff, which I think the students are interested, and in, Manu Nasma is now interested, and in, there are people like uh, Saurish. Yeah. Uh, he was interested in that. So I am saying because of the applied math program as well, as well. So I think there is some additional courses and interest that will develop the naturally, I think. Other than that, algorithms is a, I may say, is something that uh, some more Indian students love and they come here to do that. So that will grow as always. Optimization algorithm, I mean they put them all in the same class. And then the verification area, which is formal methods. Cryptology. Called, yeah. Formal methods. I mean, basically how do you check that the program is correct in some way. So okay. So so that is also, I mean, the automobile industry needs it. I mean, because nowadays everything is, you know, every device that you buy in your life has a small processing inside it. Right. And, uh, yeah, for example, your car, nowadays, there are so many of these, uh, they call them ECUs, small computing units that's here and there. Uh -huh. I mean, reliability is a real problem. I mean, so, so there's a lot of, uh, if I say, so jobs waiting there and a lot of work waiting there for people who do this uh, right. sort of stuff. Right. Yeah. Again, I think uh, that is something that, for example, we have a, sort of a collaboration with TRDC in Pune, TCS uh -huh. thing, yeah. where we have a joint PhD students. Somebody who works there, does a PhD here, I mean, he has real world problems that he has to solve and he's looking at the corresponding theory and we know the theory and we can talk to him. Okay. Kumar Madhukar is actually working with Madhavan and uh, uh, one day she was here. But how does that work? I mean, is he working in Pune? And yes, CMA has the ability for a student, once he finishes the coursework, uh -huh. to actually do his PhD in a part time. So he is actually based okay. in Pune. But he talks to Madhavan and uh, Mandayam Srivas here. He comes and spends a few months here and he goes back and works there. Okay. So in some sense he's also doing some real tool building or verification of some automobile. So his part. job actually also gives him that flexibility. Uh, that's because it's a research lab. So it's a TRNDC is the TCSS research lab end of it. 
Okay. So he so he does not have deliverables like a real okay. product. Yeah. So he I think develops tools and techniques which other people in TCS would use. Okay. For example, to maybe check so that some car is working right. 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 I mean, we are very far away from verifying a full car. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that so. Yeah, so th that area is again, I think, something which there will be a lot of activity, and I think here we have people and we will, I'm sure, attract more people in the area. Mm -hmm. Therefore, mm -hmm. that's good. Thank you very much.